Hey, come see us on tour. We'll be in Duluth, Georgia, right outside of Atlanta, Jacksonville, Florida, Tempe, Arizona, and Burbank, California. Go to JimmyDoor.com for a link for those tickets. Okay. And so um, what does that mean, miso? Can you tell me what that means? Um, Jimmy, what the fuck? <laughs> hey, how you doing? What are you doing? Good to see you. I'm asking her about her protest. It's my protest. Oh, this is your protest? Oh, no kidding. What does MISO stand for? It's, uh, these are the abortion pill protocol. Oh, is that what that is? One myth of first down pill for my, for my suprosno pills. And oh. we want people to understand uh, how medication abortion works. I don't understand how it works. It basically, you take the pill, it um, ends the pregnancy, and then expels it. Basically, it expels your uterine lining. Is, it, is, that, is that like the morning after pill? Is no, that that's the common misnomer. Oh. The morning after pill is not an abortion because it stops a pregnancy from implantation into the uterus. Okay. Where this is, if you are pregnant up until, in America, up until 10 and a half weeks, you can take this pill regimen and basically it just brings on a spontaneous miscarriage. So now that pill is still legal, right, in America or no? Um, not in several states. Really? <laughs> Yeah, it's been banned in 14 states, and in many states it's highly restricted, but you can get it mailed to your house if you live in any state in America. Oh, okay. All right. And uh, so you're just out there trying to raise awareness about that? Yep. Okay. And so, can you, are you is, you're a nonprofit, right? Yes. So you, you can't talk. I can't talk about You can't talk about it. I know, okay. No, so we're here. What I can say is it's really important for us to be in spaces and talk to politicians who have taken a line that is, I'll quote, pro-choice, and to say that when you speak of access to abortion in ways that feel stigmatizing, one of the, one of the things that we as activists around abortion access were very disappointed in Joe Biden in is that he really separated out abortion and made a lot of people who have abortions feel like, um, you know, there's a kind of abortion that's tolerated instead of honoring everyone's reasons, which are, should be valid. So we are here to educate people who are woefully mistaken. Like even you thought, I, right? I, yes. So, so for us to recenter it in a way that's goofy, yeah. dress up people, we're going to sing later, and, um, okay. and uh, pass out flyers that tell people literally the facts, and then tell them where they can get it. Like that's our role, you know. Okay. Yeah. So I can't really talk about the election. Or the anything. election. Yeah. 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 Can you talk about um, the the Democrats and, and and the Supreme Court? Well, here's the thing. What I feel about when it comes to this issue, laying, I think that I would like to hold Democrats accountable for making this only a Trump problem, making this only a, a this Supreme Court problem, because, I mean, I've been an activist for 40 years on this issue, and this is an issue that putting your head in the sand and not helping and realizing the long game that extremists had is part of the reason we got here. Sure, Trump's shitty uh, Supreme Court nominees that also got us here, but everyone who wasn't looking at the long game has a hand in it, and we don't fix shit unless everybody takes some responsibility for how we got here in this fight. So, you know, it's part of the reason that we're at the Democratic National Convention is that if we have an opportunity to talk to any elected official here who would have any kind of power to think about what we do, I don't want anybody who has an abortion to get criminalized. That's not what we do. It's not what we should be doing. And so you were, you were aware that when Barack Obama ran his first time, he said codifying Roe versus Wade was his number one issue. And then as soon as he got elected, he goes, it's not my, my priority. So is there a lot of um, resentment about that? Well, I codifying Roe v. Wade, the only way you can codify Roe v. Wade is by getting the ERA passed. So what I say is, I didn't start my organization, I started my organization during Barack Obama, but I started it because I have heard from Democrats, we're going to codify Roe v. Wade, as though Roe v. Wade was something that would solve everything. Ro the way Roe v. Wade was argued, and the same, the same Democrats now when they say restore Roe, like I hear that now. And for me, 
restoring Roe is the floor because how Roe v. Wade was argued allowed for all of these subsequent court cases to chip away at it and to finally have it overturned, right? And so I don't, I don't really, do I think politicians are gonna help do this? I think if a politician is actually making pro-abortion policies, policies of which there are, um, but we started this because we watched the states eroding this and we knew through the activists we were working with in Mississippi and Arkansas and Alabama and Oklahoma and the 35 states that we've traveled to, we have seen how a court system has been set up for years. Again, it's for years, right? Um, been set up to let laws go weave through the most extremist places and get to the most extremist Supreme Court and then here we have this thing. So, you know, we want people to understand that if you're not paying attention locally all the way that you're going to end up in a way that you're going to end up in a place you're going to get the government you want so, or the government that you so whatever do you, so do you consider yourself uh you, you're for bodily autonomy yes and you're would you still consider yourself pro-choice i think pro-choice is loose teeth because until everyone has the choice to make the decision for themselves because we we have a we live in a society that values all pregnancies and that and what I mean by that is if a 16 year old's pregnant and their value system says I would like to have this child because that's my value system then I believe that we should be able to be providing for that person if they need needs subsequently if a 35 year old has two kids and really can't, doesn't have the means to support another child we should honor that person's ability to have an abortion okay did, um, the reason I ask you is because I noticed a switch, uh, and maybe it's not, maybe my observation isn't correct, that people who used to call themselves pro-choice have, during COVID, switched to be calling themselves pro-abortion. It's not during COVID, it's been a long game of people fundamentally, activist organizations who have helped people learn what, why pro-choice was lacking as a term. So often in this movement, we have taken language, absorbed language, just that we didn't even create ourselves, or or just people who are, to use your term, pro-choice, um, decided that felt okay, decided that saying pro-choice was somehow not saying the word abortion, and how do you defend abortion if you can't say the word? I believe abortion's a moral good. I always have. This organization has always said the word abortion. Look at our shirts. Abortion. We haven't had it everywhere, and we always have. Um, you know, we have, a, we have a whole training series to help people along the various paths to become better activists. So, um, so that's interesting because I, you're, you're, in, in, you're educating me because I was going around saying that there's nobody's pro-abortion. Right. I'm wrong about that. Right? right. You are pro-abortion. 100%. Oh, and okay. why wouldn't someone be pro-abortion? Okay. Um, Unless you were taking in some of the stigma that had you have a yes but or a yes and or I'm okay with it in this circumstance because I get to be the judge of how somebody else gets to decide and what their life is going to be. I got that ain't my role. Okay, ain't I was I always considered myself pro-choice, meaning uh, I might have qualms with abortion, but I don't want the government getting in between a, a doctor and a woman who's pregnant, and I want them to make the decision. I don't want the government. But until, but if you have qualms, then you're still buying into some societal bullshit around abortion. Whatever your personal qualms are around abortion, um, that means that you think that there's a set of circumstances that you're not okay with it, and I don't find But that. I don't think I, I need, but uh, there are, but I don't think I should get to impose I don't, I, that's not, that's my business. That's not, my business is not to impose it on someone else. That's between someone else and their doctor. That's how I look at it. But if you are, if you have this, yeah, but I have these feelings, then you're not going to truly be an advocate to make sure everybody has the freedom to have an abortion. Okay. And that's how we got here because when people say, I'm pro-choice, but it's like, oh, there's another person who's not going to prioritize it, who doesn't give a fuck, who completely doesn't understand what it means to stand in the way of somebody who needs that care. And so what- So I would ask you to reevaluate that. Maybe I am, but whatever. <laughs>
what is your what is your message to someone like me? The message is if you have qualms on some level around abortion, examine what that is. Talk to me or someone else about where your feelings are about it, so that I can at least have a full conversation with you about those qualms because it says to me you haven't had a real conversation that is in the to that that centers the totality of what an abortion experience could be for someone. Well, I'd like to, I'd love to have you on the show and we can talk about have a real a longer conversation if yeah. you're up for that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, talk because I I do need to. Yeah, I do need to have a conversation yeah. about this. Kara sets all that up. Well, I did. Uh, I learned a lot, actually. I didn't know that, and now I was wrong. There are people who are pro-abortion, and she's all about it. You got to be pro-abortion. You can't be pro-choice. It's too wishy-washy. I thought that was the gold standard. I'm learning. I didn't know, but I'm still. You know, I still have qualms about abortion, but uh, totally. Uh, but. I think it's not. I, I don't want the. I don't want a government person in between a doctor and a pregnant woman. I want that them to work that shit out themselves. That's what I think. I I trust. Uh, I trust pregnant women uh, to do what's the right thing. I, I don't think it's my place to tell them what to do, or the government for sure. Hey, come see us on tour. We'll be in Duluth, Georgia, right outside of Atlanta, Jacksonville, Florida, Tempe, Arizona, and Burbank, California. Go to JimmyDoor.com for a link for those tickets. Mm -hmm.